So I want to talk to you about opening the base to contractors. What? It's a win-win. Creates more jobs, more things get done, and people get to see more military culture, and everyone comes to a better understanding. I mean, you're here and things have vastly improved. Yes, but there's one particular fellow who volunteered, and I figured I should let you know he's a little... What is he? Cook? Driver? Therapist? Villain for hire. Pod on. He's volunteered to be an enemy force. He told me to think of him as target practice. An oversimplification for the accountants, but close enough. How'd you get into this room? My brand ID badge. But you don't even look like me! Yes, you'd think they'd notice that. Do I gotta break everything down Barney style for them? I'm running out of punishments here. How quaint. Did you seriously just use the phrase, how quaint? What about the situation makes it attractively unusual or old-fashioned? Many things, my exuberant equestrian. But if you're asking what in this particular case, you keep complaining about how the guard is useless and yet things still stay the same. Something, something, definition of insanity? Hey, I tried different things. You're here, aren't you? An admirable baby step. Though why haven't simply fired all these incompetent soldiers beyond me? I can't tell if he's literal or just punning, and that's very concerning. Irrelevant. See, I'm of the belief that a unit is only as good as its leader. The old saying goes, fear not the army of wolves led by a sheep, fear the army of sheep led by a wolf. Wasn't that the plot of Zootopia? Here's my ultimatum. If I deem you to be a worthy leader, then I'll stay and help you with your pathetic soldiers into shape. If not, everything goes. How? How could I defeat the equestrian army? Firebrand, a mouse could defeat the equestrian army. <gasps> You're true, though. Here's my point. Royal Guard would not be trying to stop me. You will be trying to stop me. You want me to blow you up? Oh, no, no. Nothing so melodramatic. Look who's talking. See, I have a little test for you. I want to observe you review an episode firsthand. If your analysis reflects the wisdom and perception characteristic of a leader, then I'll simply assume that your failings are due to a lack of resources and endeavor to help you any way I can. If not... Yeah, 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 I get it. You're edgy. Can we review No Second Prances now? You're just jealous. So, this opens up with both the lights setting up for dinner. I said no magic. You were supposed to do it by hook so I could work in a friendship lesson. Oh, I heard set the table and just kind of went for it. And this here highlights one of my many problems with Starlight's character. Wait a minute. How many? <clears throat> First of all... No, 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 hold it, hold it. We only have a limited amount of time and Aramount warned me that you suffer from a bad case of the monologues. I'm a villain! Don't deny me my right! <sighs> Fine. We'll continue that conversation in a supplement video. That fair? Fine. Proceed. Well, if you hadn't used magic, you'd have heard me say, uh, this plate represents your head, this spoon is your heart, and the knives are sharp. Yes, so you can savor all the little emotions. Oi! Quoting Joker stuff is my shtick. You stop at quoting, sissy. Anyway, Twilight talks about having Celestia present to see the progress of the latest friendship protege, and this would actually be a really interesting concept. Having Celestia meet and converse with a student of Twilight in a former villain, and Starlight getting to meet with the pony who taught Twilight everything she knows, and Celestia getting to know firsthand what a student is like as a teacher. Ah, <sighs> shame nothing ever comes from it. Oh, we'll get to that later. Anyway, Starlight begins looking for a friend. Let's see, make new friends in Ponyville, the friendliest place in Equestria. Shouldn't be hard. Friendliest place in Equestria, huh? Yeah, either that or a bunch of paranoid xenophobics that'll shun you for walking on the wrong side of the street. But go ahead, flip that coin. Oh, and speaking of flipping personalities on a coin, when on earth has Mrs. Kate shown a resentment of magic? Isn't a daughter a unicorn who has already shown incredible magical feats at only one month of age? <laughs> what is it? PBCSD, post-baby cake stress disorder. 
my deepest sympathies. Back to Mrs. Cake's attitude, she should be ecstatic that someone will be able to help her out with so much of her baking. That's actually a great way to make a friend. Instead, we get her doing a routine of THEY TOOK OUR JOBS! Well, at least it's only a side character, and we probably won't see it again in the episode, and I should probably shut up and not to fate. In her defense, it is delicious! Okay, how in Havoc's name is that in her defense? The entire problem Mrs. Cake was having was that it was too well made. Like someone on trial for theft saying, In my defense, Your Honor, I did steal everything. Okay, if you nitpick everything in this episode, we're gonna be here for a thousand years. You ponies use that time increment way too often. Also, you're calling me out on being nitpicky negative? This coming from the pony as a stick shoved so far up his plot he constantly sounds like a squeaky toy. I am not a squeaky toy! Yes, you are. Now shush. Adorable. Anyway, Starlight next goes to talk to Applejack. Whoa! What's happening? I feel really weird. I'm talking so much, and I'm so articulate, enunciating with such precise pronunciation. <laughs> Annie Apple awoke and accidentally ate an auburn azalea. <laughs> Make it stop! Are you gonna nitpick at this scene too? Oh no, I just find it funny. Good. You know, I think that's another part that was carried over from Starlight's villain days. There's a moral grayness to her that I find surprising they've allowed for a main cast member. Whenever she's been told that she's done something wrong, you never really get the indication she believes it to be wrong. She only doesn't do it because she was asked not to do it. All right, I'll change him back. Save it for the supplement video. Save it for the supplement video. After Applejack thoroughly blue balls my gruesome murder fetish. What? Starlight goes to meet. Rarity. Oh, now what? You don't like rarity now? Because if you don't, we're gonna have problems. Oh, no, 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 no. I agree with you. She's one of the best characters. I'm just a little jealous. Ooh, rarity! Ow! This really is a yeah. I mean, thank you, but... Oh, it's too tight! There! Oh, you're simply darling! I don't get it. Oh, sure. When she uses power tools for a makeover, that's fine. But when I try to do it, I hear nothing but abuse. Oh, Celestia, the pain. Oh, what have you done to me? Stop complaining, lady. Your jaw looks fine as an earring. I swear, there's just no pleasing some creatures these days. Moving on to Rainbow Dash, who suggests that Spitfire would be a good friend. Yeah. Captain Backstabber of the Apple yeah. Legion. Great choice. I guess my first question would be, what's a Wonderbolt? <gasps> You've never heard of the Wonderbolt? Okay, while I applaud Rainbow Dash giving Pinky a run for her money, excuse me? How does she not know about them? They're national heroes! She's lived near Cantalot! How in the name of skydiving camels selling igloos on Mars would she not know what they are? Okay, first of all, what? Second, to be fair, I didn't know what the Blue Angels were until I actually joined the military. Heck, until high school, I still thought Army and Marines were the same thing. Which reminds me, I need to go back in time and slap myself. And while I, again, would love to see you do more reality to the void, I would argue how military the Wonderbots are given their track record. But then if I were using that logic, I'd be putting into doubt the entirety of the Royal Guard. And let's be honest here, at this point, it's safe to say the Equestria doesn't have a military. Just a bunch of ponies playing dress up. Oh, I don't want to agree with that. Yes, you do. It's your favorite form of criticism. Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> Looks like Fluttershy is up next. Good thinking, saving the most useless character for last. I, 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 I don't know him. Firebrand, get back in the studio and do your job so that I can do mine. <sighs> Freaking no second prance is delayed for three months. I'm sick of this crap. Anywho, we see that. Wait, Angel Bunny actually likes Starlight? That's. How has nobody made a fanfiction about that yet? That's juicy stuff to explore. I'm not surprised, honestly. They have so much in common. I mean, one of them is an overbearing narcissistic tyrant who strips away the free will of other ponies they do ultimately care about and fires into temper tantrums whenever they don't get their own way. And the other one is Starlight. <laughs> So they go to the spa, apparently, because that's where women go to decompress in this show. And turns out that Starlight was able to bond with someone else who happens to be a recovering evilaholic. Twilight, guess what? I made a new friend! That's fantastic news! 
She's great. No. She's powerful. No. She's... Hello, princess. No! We've had our differences. What matters is Twilight gave me a second chance, and I appreciate it. <laughs> okay, while it's hilarious to see Twilight acting like this, it's also kind of confusing. Why is she suddenly all spiteful towards Trixie? Why is she treating her worse than someone who tried to brainwash and enslave Equestria? She forgave Starlight, so why not Trixie? Besides, didn't she forgive her at the end of Magic Jewel? Well, that's certainly how it looked. Honestly, that's kind of up in the air due to that episode's rather rushed ending. As to why she's electing to not give Trixie the same chance she gave Starlight, well, maybe it's a similar thing to how some people feel with Starlight's character as a whole. Twilight feels like Trixie hasn't suffered enough for her crimes. There's a shared feeling floating around the community that Starlight hasn't been punished enough in proportion to her actions. She's brainwashed an entire town and seriously affected Twilight in the main six, and as a consequence, she gets to be Twilight's apprentice. It looks like she's being rewarded for bad behavior. That is an utterly ludicrous assessment. From a practical standpoint, it makes perfect sense that they do this. Remember, Starlight was stronger than Twilight. They couldn't punish her even if they wanted to. Like it or not, talking her down was the only viable course of action, and someone with that amount of power would need to be an Alicorn's apprentice in order to learn how to control it. But aside from that, these people clearly don't know how punishment is supposed to work. I get that you need to punish people so it's clear that their actions are not okay and will not be tolerated. But if someone has already realized actions were wrong and are actively choosing to do good, then what precisely will be accomplished by causing them pain? If you can answer me that with something other than justice or because I'll feel better or some other crap like that, then I might consider your opinion worth listening to. Because here's the reality. It's not going to change the past. You're not protecting anyone because no one's in danger, and it's not going to teach the reformed a lesson. They've already learned their lesson. All you're doing is inflicting suffering on them to make you feel better. Stop me if I'm wrong here, Candle Scout. But isn't hurting others, especially those trying to atone for your own pleasure, a bad thing? That's not seeking justice, that's being vindictive. Vindictive? You literally just talked about hanging someone's jaw as an earring! Yes, and I'm a monster. You confuse me. I am calling it the humble and penitent Trixie's Equestrian Apology Tour. That's kind of a mouthful. It's a working title. Well, there goes my idea. Oh, I liked it. But whatever she did, you've forgiven her, right? Of course. It's just, she wasn't the nicest pony. LITERALLY BRAINWASHED A TOWN! Every pony always says they'll give you a second chance, but deep down, they never forget. Okay, which rider here read getting back on your hooves? Hands up, I won't be mad. But that's an important point. Forgiveness in words versus forgiveness of the heart. It's easy to say it's okay or no harm done, but words are one thing. Actions and thoughts are another. After all, love keeps no records of being wrong. Now, I'm not saying it's easy, because we are proud creatures who really enjoy being right. It's difficult to not hold a grudge. In fact, I fail at this frequently. But in the end, I hope people will try to give me the second chance I try to give them. Can you keep a secret? Oh no, what's she gonna do? The things I've done, I did them because I was jealous of Twilight. She's just the best at everything, and I wanted to beat her at something. Oh, huh. I thought that was going in a completely different direction. Didn't expect such abject honesty from Trixie. I spend a lot of time on the road with my wagon, so it might be a tad messy. Maybe I can help. I'm pretty good at organizing stuff. Then Twilight stalks Starlight from a bush. In a completely not creepy way. And then completely forgets several lessons she learned about trusting her friends and not overreacting to stuff. Oh, don't need these anymore. Hey, 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 put those back. Just because they learned a lesson doesn't mean they apply it perfectly at all times. This isn't her not applying it perfectly, Candle Scout. This is her not having learnt anything. The episodes might as well not have happened for all the good they did. There's being flawed, and then there's being hopeless. Well, that's where I'm gonna have to disagree. I personally think these episodes have differences that are nuanced enough to warrant a similar yet different lesson. And let's take care not to throw the baby out with the bathwater. But you're wrong about Trixie. She's just like me. We have a real connection. 
That's kind of what I'm afraid of. Twilight, honey, hypocrisy is not a good color on you. I didn't know hypocrisy was a color. I'll see myself out. Wow, Trixie was right. You're not really giving her a second chance. I wonder what that says about how you feel about me. Thank you. So, Twilight, are you going to take her words to heart? Oh, now he'd be perfect. Okay, who hit her with the idiot stick? <laughs> Just darn it, Luna. You said Twilight is better than you at everything, but that's not true. You're better at magic. Only when I'm wearing a soul-sucking evil amulet, so I don't think that counts. <laughs> I love how blasé they're being about their pasts. It's like, oh, I accidentally pushed a button that leaked a thousand nukes. You rascal! I meant stage magic. Hang on, how exactly does a magician make a living in a world with magic? Especially a unicorn? Well, maybe it's not about pretending to use magic like it is with human magicians. Maybe it's about using your magic in a flashy way to make it look more impressive than it really is. Remember, Twilight said at the start of Ghostbusters that most unicorns only know a few simple spells related to her talent. The only reason Twilight was so OP is because her talent was magic, and by extension, Starlight's might be as well. So Trixie having a talent for showmanship could still wow audiences with her magic. True, and that's reinforced by... Not if you could use real magic. Obviously. Way to rub it in. This also reinforces the idea that spells like teleportation, transformation, time manipulation, and other T-something Asians aren't common spells for unicorns. I mean, other episodes reinforce the idea that any spell can be done. We've seen that spells have to be learned and practiced, but they can be created, mixed, and matched. It just seems like there are some unicorns who have better natural understandings, natural raw power, or both to accomplish it. Great, yes. Powerful, obviously, but I'm not the best. And now someone's watched Discorded Ponies. All right, just fess up, guys. So, Trixie tells Starlight about an amazing trick that Hoofdini performed with a death-defying stunt at the end that Trixie can't do because she can't do real magic. Starlight, eager to help a new brand perform this cool trick, offers to sort of lend her teleportation magic trick so she can pull it off. Okay, 10 points of helpfulness and kindness. Minus several million for good thinking. Starlight, honey, we know that rushing in like a train is kind of your thing, but you don't think playing with a death-defying stunt that requires a certain amount of well-practiced stage finesse to pull off entertainingly and convincingly on your first day on the job is a bad idea. Well, I mean, I technically infiltrated a military base on my first day, so... A diamond dog could infiltrate this base! Touché. Glad you're coming to terms with your own incompetence. <laughs> Why are we terrible? Because with all my clerical powers, the budget is such that we can't even buy a cupcake, let alone train competent soldiers. Oh yeah, that. <laughs> when it comes to magic, I don't make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Then Starlight vents about Twilight being a massive hypocrite. Lucky for Princess Twilight, I have my magic show tonight. If you have to go to the dinner, I completely understand. I just hope I find a way to survive the moonshot manticore mouth dive without my new assistant. What are you doing? I'm playing this the way Trixie played her. We then cut to the dinner where we see Celestia acting like... Floor's yours. What the f*** is this horse sh When has Celestia ever acted like a spoiled royal? We've seen in so many other episodes past and future that even when she doesn't like the present company, she keeps up a pleasant demeanor and engages in conversation. This is the pony who would take time out of her day to see the pony she cares about when she's in trouble and is constantly eager to see her student whether she succeeds or not. She made Twilight a princess, literally altered her biology so Twilight could ascend to a position of power and responsibility, and now Celestia is snubbing her friend to look snobbishly at forks? Where did this come from? Who traded in the patient, loving mother for Virginia George? Could you give us some privacy for like one second? I want to know why Star blew Twilight off like that. No message? No heads up to try and coordinate? That's... rude. 
Seriously, she's starting to act like me. I mean, normally that would make me feel good. That's not something you should aspire to. Anyways, Twilight makes a mad dash through the town to look for Starlight and finds her at Trixie's magic show. Ahem. You just decided to skip our dinner without telling me? This is exactly why I didn't want you to make friends with Trixie. You see what you did, Starlight? You made the hypocrite right about her hypocrisy. Down, boy. Moving on, Trixie begins to gloat about Starlight picking her over Twilight. That sounds like you just made friends with me to beat Twilight. Exactly! You know, I was about to begin sarcastically clapping, but then I realized that makes no sense. Trixie met Starlight by coincidence. She didn't even know who Starlight was at first, and now you're telling me she planned this all along? Episode, I know you're happy to throw the continuity of half the series in the trash can, but you at least keep your own story straight. Then Starlight runs off sobbing with Trixie calling after her. I am your friend. I am acting. Well you won. I hope you're happy. The princess of friendship fillies in gentle coats. I'm really glad to see those five seasons of character development have really paid off and she's no longer the same judgmental and sensitive character that she was in season one. Oh wait. Thank you princess twilight for getting rid of that annoying pony who wanted to be my first friend. Thank you for showing me that there's still a part of me that can feel like this because now that I know where to find it I've killed it forever. I am not sad at all. I definitely don't feel like my heart is breaking into a million pieces. Wow, I'm a jerk and even I feel bad for Trixie. Ah, the jerk got character growth. Throw it away quickly. Can do. Ah, oh, much better. Behold, your fears come true. A pony eating magicor. <laughs> Wait, shouldn't Fluttershy be the least scared? Can you see what happened in the second episode of the entire bloody show? Well, maybe Fluttershy wasn't afraid because it needed help. I mean, she wasn't afraid because her instinct to care overrode her instinct to be afraid. Now, maybe that could have been clearer here, but... Oh, they have it for that. I think the previous seasons can take any more abuse. <laughs> we should call somebody. For tonight, the great and powerful Trixie will be performing the Moonshot Manticore Mouth Dive. She does know she needs Starlight to survive. Holy fuck, are we watching a suicide on a kid's show? Starlight? Oh, I cannot wait to hear her justify her BS. Popcorn. When I first came to Ponyville, Princess Celestia gave me room to make my own decisions and my own friends. I need to give you the same freedom. I shouldn't have tried to pick and choose your friends for you. Oh, wow. It's almost like that's something one should know before becoming the literal authority on friendship itself. Well, uh, technically she did. I guess it just slipped her mind because her manufactured dislike of Trixie makes her stupid. I don't know. This is basic social niceties 101. To say she just forgot is a very weak justification for her behavior. Well, not denying that Twilight was in the wrong, but I kind of do want to make her position a little more sympathetic. Like, haven't you ever seen something that would more than likely fall apart, actually fall apart, and wanting so desperately to say, I told you so after it did? Well, one, I do say I told you so. And two, I actually have recordings of the incident so I can laugh at my friends for all time. And three, what's your point? Well, I've seen friends hang out with bad company and warn them that it would eventually lead to ruin. Not only does bad company eventually corrupt good character, but it can lead to getting into serious trouble. With one friend, it actually ended up with them getting arrested. And I don't know, if I said something different at the time, maybe things would be different. Point is, it's a blurry line between not being a gatekeeper of someone's acquaintances and trying to protect your friends from pointless harm. If this was someone dangerous, then yes, you'd be right. The difference, though, is that Trixie wasn't dangerous. Not any more of the ending of Magic Jewel is to be believed. It was only Twilight's out of nowhere hatred that caused this episode's conflict in the first place. She wants to have a bad feeling for Trixie? Fine. That actually worked great into Wear and Back Again. Just have it, you know, actually built up here instead of pulled out of her arm. Starlight, if you're out there and you still want to be friends, let's be great and powerful together. Please? Damn it, episode, I'm already mad at you. Stop making me feel things. So the trick goes off without a hitch, sorta. Twilight apologizes, as she should, and we get this little moment of, haha, we made fun of something that should have gotten addressed earlier. LOL, aren't we clever? And that was no second prances. 
<sighs> well, could have been worse. While I like the reinforcing of the things I enjoy about Starlight, and I like the idea of her being friends with Trixie, Twilight was enormously scummy and hypocritical here. And you made Celestia look bad. I'm not happy. Not. Happy. Ask me why, Bob. No. This episode is an interesting one. When you think about it, it's kind of a microcosm of the best and worst of the entire show. It's got continuity errors pouring out of its ears, the characterization is a mess, several characters spontaneously act like complete jerks purely to advance the plot, both the resolution and conflict are rushed and contrived, but if you can get past all that, which admittedly I couldn't, this episode is genuinely funny in places, the characters have the same charm and charisma as they always do, it's shockingly dark in places, and it's got some honest to havoc views moments. Have you two finished? This has gone on 6 minutes and 32 seconds longer than I scheduled. Yes, and I would very much like to move on to other projects, so I just want this one to be over. Right then, I'll be brief. First session begins Monday morning. You'll know when it starts. Wait, I passed your test? Nice! Thank you, Wikipedia. Fine, Brian, you can stop playing the fool. What do you mean? I'm not blind. You kept up with me during the entire analysis. A royal guard this incompetent should have been wiped out a long time ago, and it hasn't. Plus, I look at the other channels. You jeweled an alicorn using most of your intelligence, and you won. Not sure what you're getting at, but okay. If you're joining full-time, I'll leave you a narrow mouse capable of hooves to get you all geared up. Hope you like 90 pound armor and saddlebags and sleeping on a cotton cell block D. Oh, don't worry. I'm already moving in. How did you get them to- No, don't answer. I don't want the headache. I'm afraid you won't be able to start the training on Monday, Lunacorva. There's more to joining the army than showing up and causing pain to the commander. First, here is your paperwork. I need this filled out and returned to me by the end of the day. Then, of course, you need to read and sign this boarding contract. I also need you to get to the mandatory 13 vaccinations, detailed on page 86D and 104C, and submit yourself to magic immunity tests spanning the required four weeks, details of which are on page 328A. Then you have your own eight-week training period, overseen by Firebrand himself, as well as special mental conditioning with me. Then you have to pass your final exam, a 15-mile obstacle course of my own devising, to be officially on the payroll. Then another three-week course to become an officer and begin training the grunts. Once you become an officer, you will need to fill out another set of paperwork and report to me every evening at 6 sharp to fill out a report of the day. Are we clear, soldier? You take this so far too seriously. I like it. See you around, Candle Scout. I promise never to call you that.